Hi everyone, it's Lee Goldstein, the Trading Director of 10 Minute Trades. I want to welcome you to episode 30 of the 10 Minute Trades podcast, and I'll be covering a recap of June 13th to June 17th. But I just wanted to mention that we unfortunately did get stopped out on last Friday's WASD. It wasn't part of the wrap up. And I just want to let everyone know, don't be worried any more about WASD. We have an alternative setup that I think is going to be fantastic. We just need to tweak it from uh, last month's trade, which gave us the knowledge that we need going forward. I think WASD is going to be excellent to trade again. So I'm really looking forward to it next month. And in a couple of weeks, not even a week and a half, we have the quarterly grain report coming up. Do not be afraid to trade that report. That report is trading really, really well. And I'm excited to be trading that as well. That's on June 29th. So mark that in your calendar. That's a trade to take. So let's talk about the opens a little bit. They were a little bit more challenged this week. The beginning and middle of the week were fine. And then Friday, I had two stops, gold and oil. One of them because I made an error in judgment and traded too close to the low of the day on oil. We know for a fact if you enter right near the low or the high of the day, it increases the odds of a stop out. And I broke my rule and I paid for it. Now we've taken a break from the NQ. We did simulate a couple of NQ opens this week with very good results. So we will make a decision by July 4th whether or not we're going to bring the NQ back or not trade the NQ open. I can tell you this, I'm leaning towards bringing it back. I enjoy trading the NQ. I realize it's challenging, um, but we can find a middle ground with micros and extra contracts or just micros, I think it's worth trading. And I know a lot of you all out there want to trade it as well. So July 4th will be a final determination, but I wanna say I am leaning towards trading it. Okay, so let's talk about what happened this week besides the opens. We had core PPI on Tuesday, and that's a family money trade. It was very, very fast. And it was kind of wacky. I didn't get filled on all my targets. So I had to get out of the trade with a small profit because it was just one of those trades where it was hard to tell what was going on because it didn't execute properly. But I saw that I had profit on the board, so I got out with a small profit and it was still worth trading. And PPI has been a very solid trade. Every now and then you get a very fast move. And, you know, sometimes all your fills don't get taken out or all your targets don't get hit. Things happen in super fast markets. We know that we're prepared for that. And I was ready and got out with a profit, even though it wasn't a perfect reactionary trade. Now, the API report was trouble. And, you know, we have a rule on API. Normally, we don't like to trade it when it doesn't trade on a Tuesday. API normally is every Tuesday at 4.30. Last week, it was Wednesday because of a holiday, which brings up a situation for next week. What are we going to do next week? I know that we have a, it's not a rule that's so hard and fast that, you know, it's etched in stone. But next week brings up a very interesting question because the API is actually due for a very good move. It hasn't had one in almost a month. And these reports, they just have this continually similar, similar behavior that we can count on. So I may trade the API this week, even though it's going to be on a Wednesday. Just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, on Wednesday, we got stopped out on retail for the first time in six months. And again, I'll tell you what, on retail, you know, we've been trading the trap trade for seven months. It's never been a monster trade. Once in seven months, it was a trade of the week. And that's a good thing, obviously. But I think what we're going to do is a deep dive into retail and make sure that we're still gung-ho on our setup. Okay, we want to make sure that we're still married to the trap trade. So we're going to look at retail. Now, we're trading crude oil. We're trading natural gas, and both of them were profitable natural gas. We made almost $300 in four seconds. And then crude oil, if you took the trade, it was also a profitable trade. A little bit tougher on crude this week. It wasn't easy. Uh, but the, the best trade, the trade that I enjoyed the most, is the most interesting. And you'll see a video on it, so I'll just touch upon it lightly here. The FOMC statement was a really nice winner. 
Um, you know, watch tomorrow's trade of the week video to get a deeper dive on it. But we went back to the NQ breakout. It's funny, we did a ton of testing and it went right back to the traditional method and it was a really nice winner. The Australia employment job uh, report stopped us out. Uh, and, you know, fortunately, most of our stops were much smaller than our wins this week. So we actually made more money than we lost, even though we had some stop outs. But the Australia report, it's another report that, again, I have a better setup going forward. We're going to stick with the trap trade on Australia's jobs report, because even though it seems like the breakout is better because of poor liquidity, you often don't get filled well. I got filled at the top of the candle where the trap trade would have been a really fat, nice winner. So, and we've been trading the trap. You don't get hurt on the trap trade with Australia jobs in the same way that you do when a breakout fails. So we're going to go back to the trap trade on Australia jobs. Now, another excellent trade. In fact, it made all our money back from Australia jobs plus more was the British Bank of England rate statement. And it was also their inflation report. So it had a very good move and we made almost 375 bucks just trading a couple of contracts on that one. Very nice trade. People made money that traded with us and got up early. That was a seven o'clock AM report, which reminds me next week, I'll be getting up at 2.45 in the morning for Thursday mornings, French and German flash manufacturing trades. So come into the trade room for those. If I get up that early, it's because I feel there's a really great opportunity for profit on those reports. So I said natural gas and oil were both very nice winners, especially natural gas. Building permits and housing starts are testing said, avoid this trade, avoid this setup. It's trading with Philly Fed and Thursday jobless claims. And it just really doesn't have a good track record, doesn't have enough testing to tell us what to do. Uh, would have been a, a stop out, so not trading it was the smart move to do, and that's what we did. And then on Friday, we had the gold open, uh, the oil open, and capacity utilization. I talked about the gold and oil open already. Capacity utilization is one of those trades under the radar, you know, we are probably done looking at it. We didn't trade it because again, it's another one of those trades that doesn't have a great history, meaning it doesn't trade consistently enough. When I say it doesn't have a great history, it means one week, maybe it gets stopped on the NQ, maybe the next month, not week, but month, it needs to be traded on gold. You need consistency. You need a report to use the same index month after month or week after week, if it's weekly like natural gas and oil. And you need a setup that's similar month after month as well. You don't want to have to bounce back and forth from breakout to trap because that means the setup is not consistent. It means that the report doesn't respond consistently. And that's the most important way to make money. Consistent results in behavior. That's what we are studying. Remember, we're not looking deeply at things like Elliott Wave and the VWAP and stuff like that. We're looking at the behavior of a news report month over month or week after week. So that was it. It was kind of, uh, you know, not as busy a week as normal. It's going to start getting busier. Uh, you know, July 4th, actually, after we get through July 4th, it'll be summertime trading. So it's not going to be super busy. But as we get through the summer, there's still always going to be very strong reports. You know, we're going to have earnings in the summer. That's going to be fun and very impactful on our trading. We should make some good money on earnings. So, and they're coming up soon. July, I think July 18th roughly is Netflix. So we're, we're not that far away from earnings. So get ready and uh, be prepared. Come into the trade room, learn when the new software is coming. I, I was told I'll have the new software this coming week. Definitely the programmer told me 100%. So we'll start testing and it's not gonna be a very long period of testing. We're looking for July 4th, an extravaganza for software, new software release version 10 to celebrate our 10 years. I'm really excited about it. Really great features, the magnet trade, the adjust button. And just it's going to be awesome to have a fantastic new version of software. So that's our wrap for this week. Uh, episode 30 in the, in, the, uh, in the pile of podcasts. 
and uh, just make sure you make your way into the trade room, learn all the new setups, make sure you get updated every day when we're trading. And you know what we say at 10 Minute Trades, I'll see you in the trade room. Have a great week, everybody. See you soon.